It was in the mid-1960s, I think. Several of us were on the faculty and staff at Covenant College. We were increasingly concerned about where we might turn for the elementary and secondary schooling of our own children. Here we were promoting Christian education at the college level, while we were, our own kids were in increasingly secular public schools. So half a dozen of us started meeting regularly to see what we could do. We knew it would be a challenge. We had no facility, we had no faculty, and we had no money. Oh yes, we also had no students. What we did have was vision and a dogged commitment to establish a high quality school that understood the biblical basis for good, solid education. Sometime in 1969, we set the fall of 1970 as a deadline for opening what we then called Lookout Mountain Christian School. We had located Jack Fenema, a Dutchman with solid credentials in Christian education, and persuaded him to come as our first head of school. Lookout Mountain Presbyterian Church leased space to us, and about 25 students showed up that first year. There were a bunch of schools that started up um, about that time. Um, and, you know, they may be characterized as white flight, but they may also be, you know, things were happening in education uh, and people were looking for alternatives. And a lot of uh, churches were starting Christian schools. It was a theological, philosophical, expand our culture idea. It wasn't a reaction to uh, integration, busing, things like that, as some have thought of it. It wasn't an effort to pull out of society. It was an effort to approach society with a fresh perspective. The board, well, Covenant College's Old Testament professor, Paul Gilchrist, the psychology professor, Robert Nuremberger, Army chaplain, John McGregor, college maintenance man, John Moore, and I was in there too. All of us were from the college. Not a single one of us was from Lookout Mountain originally. We weren't natives there. We weren't veterans. We were beginners. So there were lots of late meetings. So here we were, the board. Three years after we had started, faced with the need to hire a third headmaster in just three years. And that was sobering to us to have to go through headmasters at this. It was a big task and we didn't blame them. And so I stepped up after, after some consideration and said, maybe I can do it. I'll volunteer for the job. Joel called me out of the clear blue and said, David, um, I need a biology teacher. Would you consider coming down? I said, yeah, I, I'd consider coming down. One of the first things we did when, when I got here was went down to UTC. UTC was renovating their science building. And somehow, and we always figured out how to find these things out, they were gonna get rid of all the furniture and anybody that wanted it could have it. So we got some trucks. The four of us were hauling these huge lab tables and, and uh, work tables uh, down three or four flights of uh, stairs. Just an immense chore that today I would look at and say, oh, let's hire this out. But we didn't hire anything out ever. And so we packed that basement uh, with this kind of this new lab, which was uh, fresh out of UTC. There were an awful lot of things like that going on just among board members and supporters of the school, just trying to figure out uh, you know, where are we going to get the cash? Where are we going to get the teachers? Where are we going to get this, that, and the other? And everybody, it's kind of all hands on board, uh, staying alert and staying active to uh, keep this thing going. That could be a history of the school in itself, the uh, parental activism, perhaps, uh, board-driven, and uh, principals that put their gloves on and did an awful lot of work, awful lot of work. So as I moved into my new role as headmaster, several daunting challenges more and more chased me down. One issue that I think of was the very identity of the school. Were we there primarily for Christian families on the Cub Mountain? 
That fit well with critics of our school who claimed we were part of the segregationist white flight movement. Indeed, in our earliest years, we had only token enrollment from minority families. That was embarrassing to all of us. And I vowed to go to work recruiting some African-American students from Greater Chattanooga. The next year, 19 students out of our total of 57 came from African-American families. And I've been pleased through the years to watch CCS take a leadership role on that issue. It was impossible to discuss the racial issue without also thinking about the school's location. It was evident to me that we had only a limited future on the mountain. There were great people there, but there were only so many of them. So I spent many afternoons in my earlier years scouting possible sites off the mountain. So somebody had to keep school. Nobody did that better than David Stanton. He was the 80 hours a week stabilizer who developed confidence among our families. He gave them reason to believe that our teachers were first rate and that our little school could prepare their children for college and for life. For a couple of years, we also participated in the Experimental Kono Educational Network, which proved helpful when it seemed impossible to broaden our offerings and to bridge some of the personnel gaps that we had. We also had an incredible program, if you will, uh, using a network system uh, with telephone uh, connection. So there's about seven different schools all hooked together on these two phone lines. So I'd be on a speaker headset system and my students in uh, distant places would be there. Uh, load up the, the curriculum and, and uh, have lots of classes and lots of teachers and so forth. My name is Lori Krabendam and I came to CCS in 1977. Um, my parents had uh, told me that there was a small Christian school that they wanted my sister and I to attend. I wasn't excited about coming at all, but Dad said, look out, Mount Christian School has a network, which means I could put on headphones and be taught by a teacher in Iowa and have classmates from Iowa. And so that one thing was the one little thing uh, that I was excited about. Um, getting when I came down here and of course they disbanded just before I got here so I never did get to be on the network but that in itself it seems like CCES look at Mount Christian School is ahead of its time you know the network in 77 kind of an odd um, you know oddity at the time nobody else was doing that and look at Mount Christian School was very different from what I experienced before I mean we weren't even in a school building we met at the little house school that was just um, down the hill from the RP Church which is just down the street from Covenant College on Lookout Mountain we met there one year then we moved to Hickson Presbyterian uh, the following year and then two years after that two years in a row we met at Lookout Mountain Presbyterian Church so in this, in this small building, um, we did everything together. We had all our classes together. My sister was a seventh grader and I was a ninth grader. And so she was in some of my classes, which I didn't really care for. But no, we had great, that was, that was great fun. Those kinds of things. Um, and you know, um, some other memories. Every year, um, the teachers took us with some parent volunteers to a big city. So we went to DC, we went to Chicago, and we went to Philadelphia. Um, the whole bunch, um, just like a family trip, packing in uh, in a couple of vans. There were 41 students, grades seven through 12. Um, and then teachers, um, there may have been about three full-time and then a few part-time um, teachers. David Stanton was asked to teach history. He was asked to teach Bible. He was asked to be the admin when the admin was gone. Uh, he was asked to be the bus driver and the PE teacher and the coach. And so um, I know for him in particular, there was a lot on him um, that he did for that school. Um, you know, I can think of teachers like Gary Lindley and Michael Pettit that were there in the early years. My mother-in-law was there, taught German. Um, um, so I know they did a lot of sacrifice. I know they sacrificed um, with little pay and an enormous number of hours given to the school and to the kids. So um, that's kind of my, that's what I think of when I think of 
CCS, old CCS, the sacrifice and the love for the school um, so that it could continue and grow into what it is today. I heard that one of the board members took a second mortgage out on his house uh, in order to meet some sort of account that had to be paid up or something like that. And um, I, I feel like uh, that was kind of the approach that everybody had. It's tight, we have to be careful with our finances. We uh, put together a little soccer team and we didn't have money for uniforms, so we made our own. <laughs> uh, and uh, we, we got sweatshirts. I don't know why sweatshirts, it's kind of, kind of hot around here in the fall, but we were also, we'd play any time of the year. Any, any time we could get a game with anybody, we'd, we'd play them. And so we got the stencils out and put LMCS uh, across the front of our shirts. And now everybody had a, uh, a jersey and a warm up shirt and all combined in one. So, you know, there's just a lot of, a lot of things that were done to uh, try to minimize expense. But maybe the true heroes from that period in CCS's history are indeed the families who participated. The moms, the dads, and the kids who went out on a limb to say, quote, we understand that these are the early years, but we like your sense of mission. You seem to understand where CCS wants to go. We are ready to go there with you. The question came up, we should probably change the name of the school. There is something about calling it Lookout Mountain Christian School <clears throat> that makes it seem far away. And also, that's not especially where we're gonna be located. So let's, let's, let's change our name. What shall it be? George Bladden said, Christ is King Academy. Nick Barker said, Westminster Academy. And Lou Vosco said, no, let's call it Chattanooga Christian School because it's gonna be in Chattanooga. And what we do will probably tell people more than anything whether we're Christian or not. So that will just be something that we need to keep figuring out. When I think of CCS um, and their focus, I guess three things maybe come to mind um, in the early years and currently, um, that God's been very gracious to the school, um, that he has blessed the families, the students, the teachers of CCS, um, you know, and that CCS's desire uh, is to glorify God in, in, in all that we do um, and that we say. And I, I've seen that from the beginning and I've seen that, you know, now. I mean, that may be simplifying it, but, you know, that's what we're, that's what we're here to do is to glorify the Lord. So I think the school, um, that's been the school's desire um, from an administration to teachers to the families.